On today's Maker Mashup, I'm going to show you how you can protect yourself while soldering by making your own fume extractor for just a few dollars. So on today's Maker Mashup, we're going to be putting together a fume extractor. The long story short, the fume extractor takes in solder fumes, puts it through the carbon filter, and then out the back comes your cleaner air. They're never going to remove all of the particles in the air, but it does a great job on getting it out of your face so you're not breathing it in. And for anybody that wasn't sure about flux and rosin in their solder, there's a lot of nasty chemicals and acids inside of it, so avoiding it generally better for your health. So the part that we're gonna be putting together today is really simple. There's some 3D printed parts, they'll print in under three hours for all of them. And then what we've also got here is a connection that we're gonna to need to solder. This is to a little boost module, and what that boost module does is it's gonna take five volts, bump it up to 12, and then we're just gonna use a regular 12 volt case fan for a PC. So all of these parts should only cost you a couple of dollars and you'll be able to put together yourself your own fume extractor and protect your health from solder fumes and other things that you might be working on. So with all that said, let's get to work. So this is a 120 millimeter fan from a computer case and you can see here there's three pins but we really only need to be concerned with two. Now you're going to wonder which two and I wonder which two as well. So what we're going to do is take a look on some of these pinouts for CPU fans online and you can see here that they indicate which pins are our positive, our negative, and then which one is the fan speed pin. We only need to be concerned about the 12 volt plus and minus or positive and negative. Now you'll also find that there are fan connectors like this, which piggyback onto a standard Molex connector. These tend to be a little bit easier to find out uh, which pins uh, you have and which ones are positive and negative. Um, other ones are going to be clear and the one I'm using today is from a CPU fan and I've already trimmed this here and marked one negative and I also left it a little bit longer as well. So we're going to go ahead and once we've identified our positive and negative for the fan, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next step. So what we have here is a boost module, and this is nothing more than a device that takes an input voltage and then amplifies it to a higher voltage. So this is a five volt in is what we're gonna do with the USB here. Uh, you can supply it differently, so these have a variety of uses. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is regulate 12 volts out for our CPU fan. Now, because the CPU fan only requires one watt of power and about a tenth of an amp, uh, we should be able to boost the 500 milliamps here or fifth of an amp from the uh, USB power and then supply our fan so that way it's mobile and our fume extractor can be used anywhere. So the first step here is we're going to apply some power and then we're going to use our meter to tune this screw right here to get our 12 and I'm going to set it actually to uh, 12 and a quarter volts. The fan that I'm using uh, will take up to 1.6 amps, so it gets a little bit more speed out of it for fume extraction, but essentially a 12 volt fan. Okay, so you can see here I've got this hooked up now. We've got the power, and then these are just some test leads that I've clipped on here to uh, the meter, which tells how much power that we've got going in here. So now what we're gonna do is just turn the screw and it's going to reduce the voltage that is on the output. And then you're gonna to wanna to tool this back to the 12 volts. Now, if it's reading low, then you're gonna to wanna to increase it, but our target number is gonna be 12 volts. And as I've tested this before doing the video, I know I'm going to mark mine at about 12.25 volts. Okay, so let's move on to getting the solder. I've also printed out uh, a 3D printed case. And once you put this in here, you can see it hides almost all the electronics. It's a pretty simple case, but we're only gonna be using this for the USB connection. 
So what we're gonna do is solder on here the positive and negative of the fan to the output pins that are located here. Now make sure that before you start soldering, you put this into the hole on the bottom of the case. So that way we're ready to go once we've made our solder connections here. So our negative leads a little bit too long. So I'm gonna trim that down. And then we're gonna just drop a little solder on here and solder on our negative and positive leads right to the boost module. Okay, so now that we have this all soldered up, we're gonna go ahead and insert it into this case. Now this is tight fitting and it will hold the electronics in there. Now, what you can also do if you feel like you need a little bit more adhesion to the 3D print is drop a little piece of uh, hot glue right here. Well, we're just gonna go ahead and insert it into our case. And a little wiggle there, and we're all set. There we go. All right, so we're ready for our assembly. These are 45 millimeter long M3 metric screws, and I have links for those in the description. This here is our carbon filter. This is a carbon filter replacement for other smoke extractors, and I have a link for this in the description. This one fits perfectly for our 120 millimeter fan. Now the 3D prints here, I've put a link in the description to these prints on Thingiverse. Uh, they're available. I put these together in my own design, so you'll find it there. The design of this is supposed to be the minimal number of parts and a very fast way to put this together. So uh, the way that, that's how I approach this. So our first step here is going to be to put some holes into this filter that match these here. The simplest way to do that is to put your carbon filter into the 3D print. And you can see it fits pretty snugly all together. And then what we're gonna do is you're just gonna take your M3 screw and you're just gonna push that all the way through to the other side. Okay, so you can see here, maybe if I catch the light the right way, that we have those holes in our uh, carbon filter now. Our next step is gonna be to put the main grate on. And you just line this up right with those, and this helps keep the carbon filter in place. Okay, now we're ready to attach this to our fan. Okay, so we're ready for our final assembly here. What we've got are four of these feet. There's only one in the design. They all fit the same way. So you're gonna to wanna to print four of these. And then optionally, you can put another faceplate on the back. Now, I wanted the faceplate here just so that way we had another layer of protection here against fingers or uh, electrical wires, any kind of clips. But you don't need the second one. You can print only one if you want. Uh, so now the next step really is to just line up the bottom of the fan so you can see here we just have the the logo that's there and then we're going to go ahead and just simply push these through our fan and these screws fit just enough now if you don't print this cover plate you might want to go with some slightly smaller screws the or the screws that i used here are 45s However, if you're not gonna print this back plate, then you might wanna go with some 40s. And then once that's done, you just attach one of the feet to all four of the corners. Now, I designed this print so you don't need anything special. These screws will tap directly into the plastic and they're set to be M3. So uh, you may need to adjust your horizontal expansion on your 3D print if you find that they're too tight or not tight enough. Okay, so there we have it. The stands on its own, it uses these back feet. You can tilt it around on any side that helps make that fit. And let's turn it on and give it a test. All right, there we go. Let's try some solder. Our fume extractor is all complete 
And we've now got a way to keep the fumes from our soldering work away from us. Okay, so here we have our finished fume extractor. I like the purple color with the blue lighted case fan and having it powered by five volts means I can make this mobile and put it anywhere. I could even attach a cell phone battery to it if I wanted to and power it remotely. So this is actually a really great thing to build for yourself and build for a STEM teacher. If you know a STEM teacher, build them a few of these for their electronics class. I assure you they'll be very grateful. So with that, I wanna know if you're gonna build this. If you do, let me know down in the description. I'd love to hear about the projects that you're working on. And if you wanna talk with some other makers, feel free to join our Discord. We have so many brilliant people out in that Discord that will help you solve this project or any project problems you might be having. So with that brings the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to share and subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming project videos. I wanna thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time.